Hello everyone, welcome back to Clear Creek Solutions hydrology education videos. Today we're going to be going over the topic of water pollution, what contributes to polluting water, water whether it's our drinking water, fresh water, ocean sources, river sources, how does the pollution get there, what are the main sources of pollution, and how could they be addressed in the future, and how can we work to resolve these issues. That's what we're going to be going over in this video here. If you haven't already, like and subscribe to the channel so you can stay updated on our weekly videos. And we have an entire library on how to use different stormwater software on different hydrology education topics and other explanatory and other explanatory videos like this. So check them out on our YouTube channel. Anyways, let's get into the topic. So stormwater is polluted water that picks up debris and particles as it moves over the ground. Particularly in urban environments, stormwater will collect many harmful pollutants that unmitigated will collect in local water bodies. That could be oceans, could be rivers, local streams, and it could be drinking water supply areas. So what are the most common sources of pollution? Well, what I'm going to list below are the most common sources of pollution and the potential danger that they have to clean water supplies. So number one is roadways, because there are so many potential toxins on roadways. We could have tire, oil, uh, all sorts of other trash and pollutants, waste, for example, we could have animal waste, human waste, we could have uh, trash from different particles and things like that. Um, that's another very common source of pollution as well, or un unmitigated trash sources. Uh, erosion is another one, one that people don't talk about a lot, but if stormwater events are not properly mitigated with the proper facilities, the stormwater in the runoff will pick up erosive particles, so sand, gravel, as it moves across the ground, and it will end up in streams. And then of course, chemicals. So that would be things like gasoline or from other sources like factories and things like that. Chemicals can accumulate in the water, changing the composition and making it dangerous. So impervious surfaces are likely to cause pollution and increase runoff during and after rainfall events. The water will collect pollutants such as oil, tire residue, trash, and other debris. So specifically when water moves across these impervious surfaces, a roadway, like a highway roadway would be a great example that's just going to be a an area where a lot of pollutants are going to collect and a lot of problems are going to arise because there's vehicles moving on there. There's cars, there's animals, it's outdoors, and it's just a great way for water to accumulate these dangerous chemicals. So through infiltration and preventing runoff, we can mitigate some of these issues. So by utilizing infiltration, it allows water to drain into the ground aquifer and be cleaned through natural means. So when water moves through a ground aquifer, uh, the natural roots in the ground actually do a great job of pulling the different pollutants from the water and keeping it clean. And when water is infiltrated, it reduces the amount of polluted water entering the stormwater drainage system as a whole. And infiltration prevents polluted water from continuing downstream and mixing with the fresh water supply. So when it infiltrates in the ground, it gets clean, it reduces the amount of polluted water, and it keeps those toxins from reaching the fresh water sources in the first place. And so the reduction of polluted water heading downstream protects wildlife habitats and aqua-based species as well. So not just the water supply, but also the animals downstream uh, will, will benefit from infiltration. So a point source pollution comes from one single place or location. So something like a power plant and factories are forms of point solution pol pollution, which they re release toxins and pollutants into the air and water. So we know where it's coming from. It comes from one place and to release into the natural, natural environment. But non-point sources, non-point sources of pollution are much more difficult to identify a roadway is a good example of non-point sources because we have the tire rubber, we have the roadway gravel, we have the gasoline exhaust, trash, many other factors that may contribute to pollution, and it's a lot harder for us to pin down what is going on and how that's contributing. So here's the examples. On the left, we have a point source, a factory. It's very clear. We have some toxins being released into the air. We know where it's coming from. But the non-point source is this roadway. Where could the different toxins and pollutants be coming from? Well, there's a lot of different sources, and it's hard to, hard to identify how much each is exactly is contributing to the problem. So what are some potential water treatment solutions? There are a variety of water treatment solutions that can be utilized to remove pollutants. We have treatment plants for one of them. Water physically moves into these plants. It's treated using different chemicals or different processes and then released back into the environment. We have LID or low impact designs, which is going to be on site stormwater solutions to help us clean the water on site immediately after it rains. We have infiltration, which we discussed earlier. You can have facilities for infiltration or natural ways of infiltration or on-site treatment as well. So using something like filter cartridges, which are uh, constructions, but they can be on-site and actually treat the water as soon as it rains. Airborne pollutants can contribute to acid rain. So this is another thing we need to consider. A phenomenon when nitrogen is mixed with sulfur oxide and water, this is considered to be a non-point source of pollution. So when too much pollution enters the air, 
we get this phenomenon known as acid rain. So you can see on the left and right how these trees have deteriorated because of the polluted rainfall now landing on the ground. So before the water even reached the ground, it has been polluted. And so that can cause some major issues for the environment and for the eventual runoff there. In many rural communities, runoff will wash sediment from farms that include pesticides and fertilizers. This runoff will likely be carried over roadways, polluting rivers and lakes downstream. So in these rural communities, remember, different things like fertilizers, pesticides, and other chemicals are used on plants for growing or keep bugs or different pests from entering or destroying the crops. And so when it rains, the water is going to collect those chemicals as well and carry them downstream to lakes and rivers. So that has to be considered for treatment as well. So it's not just urban environments, but even rural envi environments will struggle with stormwater pollution. The Clean Water Act worked to reduce point and non-point pollution sources, making America the pioneers of sustainable water treatment and preservation. So in the 70s, America enacted the Clean Water Act to reduce both the point and non-point pollution sources, improving water quality over the next five decades. So what are some more solutions for the crisis? One would be increased water conservation practices, which includes water recycling, reduce urban pollution, and overall water waste. Two is increase the use of LID facilities such as bioretention and rain gardens to filter the water on site. Three is use methods such as continuous simulation hydrology to model the entire water cycle and create appropriately sized facilities to treat water. And four, make communities more aware of water conservation and preservation practices to reduce pollutions and support initiatives. So educate people on what is going on so they can take the proper actions. So what is continuous simulation hydrology? Well, continuous simulation hydrology does the best job at representing stormwater patterns with historical data. We have some videos on that as well on our channel if you want to check those out. This allows designers to model facilities to reduce sedimentation, pollution, and runoff. So continuous simulation uses actual historical rainfall data, not, syn not synthetic data. It runs the model for 70 plus years of historical data. Then we model the facilities to reduce stream pollution and erosive flows and it allows the facility to meet a local compliance and LID function in your jurisdiction. So it's benefit beneficial to all those degrees and is more accurate than any other method. So as an overview of stormwater pollution problems, if you have any questions, let us know in a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. Anyways, we'll see you guys next time.